Hi everyone, this is Sarah of TheHealthyHomeEconomist.com and for Christmas dinner this year, 2010, my family decided to have Christmas duck. And um, actually the number one choice was for a goose, but I was unable to source a goose in time for Christmas. And so our choice, second choice was duck, which I was able to source and um, I was very fortunate to be able to get a very good price on a couple of ducks. So that's what we went with this year. We don't generally like to have turkey for, for Christmas because we've just, just had it for Thanksgiving a few weeks ago. So we'd like to have something a little different. Particularly because I make so much stock with our choice for either Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. I like to get a different kind of stock in for Christmas. So we got a lot of turkey stock with our uh, turkey at Thanksgiving. So I'm very excited to get a lot of duck stock out of our Christmas ducks. And if you've never cooked a duck or a goose before, let me just briefly go over a couple of things you need to know about the differences between goose um, and duck versus a turkey or a chicken. Um, a goose or a duck has a lot more fat on it. They're much, much fattier, and you get a lot less meat off of them versus a chicken or a turkey. However, it's made up for in other ways, the fact that you get less meat. Um, first of all, um, you cannot stuff a duck or a goose with stuffing, with bread stuffing, because there's so much oil, there's so much fat in the bird that it actually um, would just turn to mush. So the proper selection for stuffing a goose or a duck is typically fruit, and that is exactly what we stuffed our Christmas duck with. We stuffed it with uh, raisins and satanas and also organic oranges from our front yard. We have, are fortunate enough to have a number of organic citrus trees in our front yard and we just went out and picked some ripe oranges and that um, was the basis of the stuffing for our Christmas duck. Um, also, um, the wonderful thing about duck and goose is that you get a tremendous amount of fat off of them when you cook them. And uh, you can see here, this is all the extra duck fat that came off the two ducks that uh, were cooked for our Christmas dinner. And um, do you realize that people actually throw this out? Can you believe it? This is the most, some of the most nutritious, delicious fat um, that you can find anywhere. Duck and goose fat is fantastic and full of nutrition. And I covet this, I love this fat. And I keep it in the refrigerator and I use it for roasting vegetables. I'll be using this to roast vegetables for the next several weeks. And boy, if you ever tasted vegetables roasted in duck or goose fat, you are really missing out. They are delicious and so nutritious um, when you add this wonderful healthy fat to them, not like, boring steamed vegetables um, steamed in water, uh, tasteless. I mean, how could anyone eat vegetables like that? I have no idea. No wonder kids don't eat vegetables because people offer them these tasteless vegetables and uh, I certainly wouldn't eat them. I don't know why anyone would expect a child to eat them. So learn to prepare your vegetables the traditional way, cooked in butter or even, you know, or wonderful duck or goose fat. Um, and you will be delighted at how delicious they are, as well as nutritious. So um, once you've cooked your, your duck or your goose, and uh, you've, you've pulled all the fruit out of it, you've taken all the meat off of it, you have what's left, you have these bones. And I certainly hope that whatever bird you, or whatever, um, bird you selected for your Christmas dinner, your holiday dinner, you did not throw these bones out. Oh, please tell me you did not throw them out, because they will make so much soup for you um, that you will be delighted. And um, this is uh, something I definitely keep in mind when I'm selecting our Christmas bird or a Thanksgiving bird, um, how much stock I'm actually gonna get off of it. So these two ducks that we had for our Christmas dinner have been completely stripped of all the meat, all the fruit has been removed from the inside, and I have my jumbo 16 quart stock pot here ready to go, and uh, it's about halfway full with wa filtered water right here. And um, you're just gonna take the bones of your, your duck or your goose or your turkey, whatever you selected, and go ahead and put it in the water. If you need to break it up a little bit because it's a smaller stock pot, that is totally fine. So I've, I've put the, uh, the duck down into the water. The water is just covering the duck now and I'm going to take a half a cup of vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and pour it into the water. I'm going to stir it up just a bit. Mix that in there. And what the vinegar actually does is it 
as the um, water is simmering, when we bring this to a boil, you'll see how that works, but the vinegar will help to draw the minerals and other nutrition out of the bones of the duck into the water and give that uh, stock its wonderful, wonderful flavor that uh, that is just, you can only get from homemade stock. You just cannot buy this kind of thing at the store. So then I'm going to cover this up. I'm going to put it on the stove here. And you can either leave it for 30 minutes or so. French cooking recommends that you actually let it sit without heating it. Once you've added the vinegar to the water, let it sit for 30 minutes or so. I guess to maybe start the process of bringing the minerals out. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, perhaps some of you that are well-versed in French cooking can comment on this blog and, and, uh, and tell us the actual reason. But, oops, I forgot one more thing I need to add. I've got the duck livers and the heart and the neck that have been simmering on the stove here that we used for gravy. We cooked these and used the juices in our duck gravy with our Christmas dinner. I'm now going to put just the rest of this in there just to add a little bit more flavor to the stock. And now I'm going to cover that up and I'm actually going to put this on medium to high and I'm going to bring this to a boil. And when it comes to a boil, you'll see that there's some foam that comes to the top, and I'm going to pick it up at that point and show you how to skim that off. The duck stock is about to come to a boil here, so let's take a look and see what we have. As you can see, oops, as you can see, we've got some foam here coming to the top. There's not a lot at all, which is indicative of a very high-quality, clean duck. And that is always something that I'm always interested um, to find out. That's another reason why wherever you get source your duck or your goose or your chickens or your turkeys, it's important to make stock with, stock with it so that you can assess the quality of your source. If you, uh, if you buy a chicken or turkey from a producer that produces a ton of foam, um, you know that it's not a very clean source and you're not going to want to buy from that source anymore. Um, I can't tell you how many people I know who once they started trying to make stock with chickens or turkeys that they purchased at the grocery store um, and they saw how much foam, how much scum actually came to the top when they tried to make stock with it, that that is what got them to source better quality um, meat and uh, was, was just the act of making stock alone. So I encourage you to use your stock making as, as a method for assessing the quality of your source. All right, so we brought that to a bowl. Didn't take much, look at just a tiny bit of scum came to the top. Very clean ducks here, very clean ducks. So we are now going to turn the heat down, medium to low, and we're gonna let this simmer for a good 24 hours, believe it or not. And when it's done, when it's done simmering, and, and again, you don't want a rolling boil. You just want it to kind of bloop, bloop, you know, you just want to kind of have some bubbles come up every few seconds and have it be very much a low simmer is what you're shooting for here with your stock. And when it's complete, then you're going to turn it off, turn the heat off, take it off the heat, let it cool for a few hours, and then you're going to put it until it's, you know, just warm and it's not completely cold. Uh, you don't want to let it go to room temperature, but still you don't want it to be hot when you strain it. So let it cool for a few hours and then um, strain all the bones out and discard those. And then um, put, put it in containers to freeze. And the containers I've been asked by several people what I use to freeze my stock. You can use glass mason jars. Obviously glass is the best material for freezing your stock, but it's not always practical due to its uh, tendency to crack and break in the freezer. Even if you do leave some room at the top, um, it's not always going to work. So I get these um, plastic containers just from the local uh, Target or your local um, Walmart even. I don't really like to go to Walmart, so I, I try to recommend Target instead or maybe another um, place where you can get these types of kitchen gadgets. And these are just a couple of dollars. I don't ever put these in the dishwasher. You don't ever want to expose this type of, type of plastic, even though this is the non-leaching kind of plastic, plastic number five. Um, you don't, all plastic will leach if you uh, 
expose it to, to enough heat. So the idea is to wash it with a mild hand uh, detergent by hand in the sink. Never put it in the dishwasher. Never expose it to a lot of heat, only warm temperatures. And so once the stock has cooled down, then I will pour it into these containers and stick these in the freezer. And this is um, a half a gallon. And I'm going to get probably um, probably two or th two gallons of stock. I'm thinking two gallons of duck stock. So I'm thinking I'll be able to fill this gallon container and these two half gallon containers, and that's two gallons worth of stock. And that's what I'm guessing I will get out of this uh, batch of duck stock. I hope you found this video lesson helpful for today. If you have any questions on cooking duck or making duck stock or any other questions in this area, please comment on the blog. I'd be happy to answer them for you. And this is Sarah, the Healthy Home Economist, and I'm wishing you all the best in the kitchen.